Hi there, I'm SR Coder and welcome back to part 5 in my video tutorial series on using ML API. In this video I'm simply going to do a really quick one hopefully on um, creating the player health. So we'll get started straight away and we'll just create ourselves, well, I'll do on this one, we'll just create ourselves a new C Sharp script. So if you click on <coughs> C Sharp script, let's call this one player health. Um, we're going to use the um, same process as we used for the um, the shooting and that we're going to use networked VARs. So we covered them a little bit in the uh, in the last one and hopefully this one will be even simpler. So we have a player health. Well, I'm, um, I'll just explain what I want to do. What I'm, what I'm wanting to do for the um, for this video is to simply have the player have a health script on him and when we shoot him uh, the health script goes down. So uh, the we're going to do that through the networked VAR system. So let's get straight to it, I suppose. Um, what we'll do is we'll uh, need to make sure that this is a network behavior. So um, should be getting familiar now. So we'll use ML API. And because um, we're using the networked VARs, we'll also include ML API dot network VAR um, as well. So we're going to create a networked VAR now. Um, maybe needs a little explanation um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to create a network var float um, and we're going to have a floating point value to hold the health um, network vars as you know can be synchronized across the network um, what we're going to do though is just make it in the easy the easiest way possible so we're going to have the server actually affect the network var so that it's synchronized across to all connected clones. So um, we'll just create this new one, so new network var float and um, what we can do is rather than have to set permissions because we're going to change this, um, so the server is going to be the only thing that's changing this, we don't need to change the right permissions. So I'm just going to use this version of it here where we just give it a value and I'm just going to um, again, poor coding but um, you get the idea, this is quickest, so just hard code a value in here. Um, this will be, as I mentioned before, synchronized across the network. Um, all we really need to make this work, I'll take all this out of the way for now, all we really need to make this work is a method to call um, on the um, player when we actually damage it. So uh, let's just create that, so we'll make it public, and we'll make it a void return type, and we'll call it um, take damage and uh, we'll pass to it a floating point value of the amount of damage that we take and that will just be subtracted from the health so we'll just say um, health minus equals damage um, the uh, uh, yep, health dot value uh, minus equals damage um, so it's a fairly simple um, script um, implementing it on the other hand and doing something about it is going to be the, the harder part. So uh, we'll go back to our player shooting script and um, I'll show you, uh, we'll continue on with this player shooting script and we'll um, get this working properly for doing damage to the player. Um, the next thing that we're going to have to do is work out if we're actually able to shoot and then we're probably going to run a method so I'm um, going to create a few variables at the top here to get myself organized so I'm going to make a, um, a fire rate variable um, to replace this value that we had down here for the, uh, the particle system because um, we're going to use it again we may as well create a variable for it and we're going to have a, a shoot timer as well so we're going to say uh, shoot timer and we'll just initialize that to zero so I've got a floating point variable t for this one too so if we're the local player we're just gonna oh, let's leave this bit in so this will test whether the mouse is down or not um, and then we'll need to work out we'll need to increase this um, shoot timer um, by adding time dot delta time onto it to make sure that we're able to shoot so that the shoot timer has gone above the, the actual amount that the fire rate allows and then we'll say um, so if we're if we're shooting, if we've actually got the mouse button down, um, and we're uh, our shoot timer is greater than or equal to one over the fire rate, um, 
then we should be able to shoot. So, uh, yep, shooting dot value. Sorry, oops. So shooting dot value. Um, so if this is true, it means we're actually shooting, and the timer is above the right amount. Is that an extra bracket in there? Yep. There we go. Get rid of that. I finally got there. Um, so this means that we're we're able to shoot. So we'll we'll make the shoot timer go back to zero again before we forget, so that we don't fire every single frame. So we're pressing the mouse button down, and the timer's correct, and we'll reset this, and then we'll just call our um, we'll make a shoot method, uh, so that we can call our method. Uh, so let's just write let's just write that method. So this shouldn't be uh, a surprise to anyone that's done any uh, first person shooters programming before. So I'm going to make um, a void and we call the method shoot for now uh, before we network it. And we're just going to create a ray. So um, make a new ray called ray and we'll initialize this ray from the actually from the bullet particle system is the best place so we'll just say bullet particle system dot transform dot position and we'll go in the bullet particle systems forward direction as well with transform dot forward <coughs> so we've initialized this ray and now we'll do the standard if physics dot raycast so if physics dot raycast we pass in the method I like to use is we pass in the ray we uh, get the information out without raycast hit uh, hit so that will fill out that data structure if we if it's successful and uh, we'll also return true if it's successful and we'll just give it a random distance of like uh, 100 and uh, close that bracket so um, we hit something and uh, we need to check if it's the player so I'm just going to um, create a variable um, called player and we'll use it, we're going to get the we're going to hopefully get the uh, this hit to fill it out with the player health. Um, in theory, the player health should be on the player, and that's the thing we want to affect. So um, var player equals, and we're going to use that hit dot collider, and we'll get the component or attempt to get the component of player health on the thing that we hit. Um, in theory, if that's successful if it's not null so if player is not equal to null then um, we we hit a player and so we should just really affect his health and that's fairly simple because we've written a public method so we can just say player dot take damage and pass in some value for how much damage we would like to do uh, we need to make sure we actually call that method so I hadn't made it so I'm going to call it now um, so let's take a quick check. Well, uh, for the local player, we're actually shooting, and the timer, the fire rate, the shoot timer has gone up above the fire rate. And um, we reset the timer and shoot. So in theory, that kind of should work. Um, while I was in testing doing this, um, one of the things that uh, I couldn't get working was this collider. Um, I'll this is all saved, make sure everything's saved, and we'll go back to um, the main uh, player again. So if you, you open up your player prefab, um, I folded all these away, but in theory the uh, the character controller is inherited from Collider and it should actually block things. Um, it blocks the particles, but it doesn't seem to detect the raycasts, weirdly. And um, and I had made sure that there's no other colliders on anything else. So I think there was a collider on on this that we need to remove as well. So make sure there's no other colliders because we want only the colliders to be on the top level because that's the only thing that has the um, the player health. It doesn't actually have the player health. Let's put the player health on. That'd be a good thing. So make sure the player health is on as well. The uh, yeah, what we wanted to do is, to this top level player, we wanted to add some kind of collider. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to add from the physics menu, I'm going to add this capsule collider. And uh, to match the size of the actual pill capsule that we have, we'll set the height to 2. So i just uh, go down here and set the height to 2. It should match exactly the capsule collider that isn't on the player mesh anymore. And that'll just be 
find for our character. So make sure you've added this player health. Um, then we need to make sure that we have a way of, uh, of testing this. So um, the documentation for MLAPI actually says that these uh, network VARs are not serializable. So I didn't think that this would work, but in testing I did see that um, we could see this. We could actually see this public variable um, inside of the inspector. So inside of the player health, make sure you change network VAR float health to public and um, you should now uh, in the player here when we go to the player health you should see this health drop down you can open it up and you can see the, the value for that so we're able to test it so I'm going to pause the video and just test it and make sure it works and I'll come back with any problems that I've, got, I've had so I've got uh, the two things set up ready to go the two uh, versions ready to go so I'm just going to hit play I actually made sure that they, these were um, uh, small screen again so I've uh, undid this maximize on play and we're going to host on the left hand side and on the right hand side I'm going to join and I'm going to show you the issue that we have so uh, we are able to network the shooting so far so we can we can tell if we're actually shooting or not so I can I can see that we're shooting across the face of the other guy um, if I go up here you can see when we click on the player, this um, this one it says is local player is true. So the bottom one is the local player here, and the top one is obviously the the other guy. Um, so the other guy, if we look at his, his initial, uh, sorry his health, as I shoot him, um, you can see the internal value that we have there. This value is going down. So I know that it's working. Um, it, it works exactly the same on the other one. So the local player can shoot this one. Um, however, the issue that we have is if you notice that the, the the guy over here is looking at this this guy. So this is the other this is the other connected one, and uh, according to us, his health is minus three hundred and forty. So on our on our game, his health is minus three hundred and forty. But clearly, um, if I go over here and find the local player, so uh, his local player falls. So it's this one, top one. So this is the local player here. Um, our health is still a hundred. So the the message. Has, has only worked locally to the game that's working, which makes sense because we've not met, they've not tried to network it. So, um, in the next uh, part, we're just going to show you um, how to fix that. So the um, the way we do that is actually fairly simple, but the why is um, pretty difficult to understand. Um, I highly recommend that you uh, have this up in an, an open tab while you're programming with MLAPI but one of the main the main thing in the basics is this messaging system so this um, RPC or remote procedure call messages um, and uh, the messages effectively are a way of transmitting the information um, across the server uh, across the uh, network to uh, to different things so it's it's worth the read um, I'll try and explain it um, as I do with all the students that I teach when we when we cover this stuff is um, with a simple diagram. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to bore you with this, but um, imagine we have uh, Bob is on his connected PC and and Tim's on his connected PC, and the pink one here is Bob, and the, the blue one here is Tim. Um, they've all got the same code running, so they've all got a take damage on them. Um, so let's let's imagine here that um, that Tim uh, Tim decides he's going to he's going to shoot Bob. Um, Bob here, um, he runs he runs take damage. Um, however, um, if he just runs this take damage, there's no way that Bob over here can uh, can take damage. Or or on Bob's PC, there's no way that Bob knows that he's taken damage. And so the way that we've the way that we did it, um, the way that the messaging system suggests that you do it, is that um, um, and the way we've done it in this one is that what we're actually doing is we're going to run what's called um, a server. RPC. So um, Tim uh, runs the server RPC that actually does the shooting over here. So Bob on the server, uh, Bob runs take damage. Um, the network var take damage. Um, Bob runs take damage, but the way that the network vars work is that um, the network vars actually synchronize this information down. So um, on the local machine here, um, Tim uh, 
Tim's version of Bob it doesn't actually take damage and um, only when we send that information up to to do the shooting on the server then we the ray cast gets done this take damage gets run on the server this take damage method on Bob on the server and then network vars handle the rest of the communication out to every connected client so however many there is Bob will uh, will run that take damage method on on his clone here or his clone here or any other connected ones so hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer I, I can't tell you the number of times I've had to uh, draw this diagram on the board to explain this to uh, some of my students that have been doing the network stuff so um, I'll show you how to solve this uh, if we go back to our code so um, despite it being such a cool uh, complicated thing the code to do it um, considering all that we've written already is uh, is very arbitrary and very simple so we want um, to be using the messaging uh, from ML API because we're actually going to just uh, turn this into a server RPC as I showed you a few seconds ago and the way the way we do this is um, we just put the attribute at the top of um, server RPC so this should appear now um, this will get run on the server so uh, the local player runs on the server so instead of just calling this method shoot we need to make sure that we're called it properly um, across the server and the way you do that if I remove this line is um, invoke server RPC and then um, the name of the method that you want to invoke uh, there's a bunch of overloads for this you can actually pass tons of values in here as well and set permissions and um, dozens of other things so I'm um, just doing it in the simplest absolutely the simplest possible way by just calling this method on the server because it's a server RPC it will shoot it will say to the server version of whatever it hits that it's taken damage and because the server version has this network var the value should go down um, on all of them every single connected clone so hopefully this is the simplest method of showing you this um, server RPC thing and how to do this this shooting so I'll pause the video and I'll uh, show you in action so I've got the uh, game up and running, and um, so we can show you this in action. And I've got the uh, I'll just show you. I've got the local player selected over here. So this is the local player. So he's got the clone, um, a clone of the other player here. If I, um, if this is successful, the local player that we've selected over here, we should see his health go down because he's, you know, he's not on the same instance. It's a, this is a, across the network. So if I shoot this and we see the set the value go down, you can see on the left hand side the health value of the connected player is going down so we now know that it's synchronized um, across the network so it doesn't matter how many connected clients we have they'll all be synchronized with the correct value um, so it's a fairly long video um, I'm going to pause it there and in the next video we'll deal with um, deal with what happens when we actually get to uh, zero health with some uh, simple respawning so uh, please uh, like and subscribe hopefully that's made some of the network stuff a lot clearer it's pretty important to understand that sort of network diagram and how things work from servers to clients uh, if you're going to progress with any more network programming so uh, yeah um, as i said like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video